This video is for all of you who are brand new to sewing. Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing fun and approachable. This is going to be sort of a casual chatty video and I want to talk about a lot of questions I see over and over again from the beginner sewists. So believe it or not, I actually do lurk in a lot of online sewing communities and I'm seeing a lot of questions and topics come up over and over again. So I actually devised some notes. I kind of came up with some basic things I wanted to talk about. And what I want to do here is try to go through a lot of the very common questions I see and answer it as someone who makes a living with a sewing YouTube channel. I'm obviously a sewing enthusiast and I've been sewing for about a decade. So if you are interested in just getting some very basic advice that you probably need to hear if you're new, stay tuned. Okay, first I really want to talk about the monetary aspect because I think that's something that can come as a shock to a lot of people who are just getting into sewing as a hobby. And I think one misconception from people who either don't sew or who are literally brand new is this whole idea that you sew to save money. And that's generally just not true. I think there are some ways that you can sew to save money on some things, but generally sewing, I would say, is not the cheapest hobby to have. And if you are trying to do clothing, which I know a lot of the younger people out there, shout out to you. I think it's awesome you're trying to get into sewing. But I see a lot of people posting things like, oh, hey, I'm trying to make this dress thinking they're going to save money by making it themselves. And I think people are going to get sticker shock when they realize how expensive sewing machines are. Even some sewing patterns are kind of pricey, how expensive fabric is. And at the end of the day, in a lot of the situations, especially when you're making clothing, you don't end up saving any money versus buying something from the store. In fact, it can be significantly more expensive. Now, if you're trying to sew for ethical and sustainability reasons, that's a whole other story. And obviously, making your own clothing, knowing where your clothes come from, is a great way to at least be able to know that your clothes are made in an ethical way and that nobody's being exploited. I think that's a great reason to sew. But in terms of saving money, in a lot of situations, it's just not there. For instance, I'm wearing a very basic t-shirt I got from like Target or something like that. This shirt might cost like $8 at a big box store. Now, if I was going to try to make this t-shirt, I would need a specific equipment because sewing with knits can be a little bit tricky. You often need like a serger, a cover stitch machine, a regular sewing machine, and then you need to buy the knit fabric. And while knit fabric can be a little bit less expensive than other types of fabric, it's absolutely not going to be cheaper than the $8 you're paying at the store. Again, the fast fashion aspect is a whole other issue. I'm just talking about the cost here, but you're not going to be able to buy fabric at Probably not and have it be like less than $8 plus you have to count for your time in making the item. So again, I think if you're trying to sew clothing to be like responsible in your fashion, I think that's awesome. But if you're just someone who's trying to save money, this may not be the avenue. Now where it starts to make sense in my opinion is that if you're in a situation and you're trying to replicate designer items, designer clothing is extremely expensive, especially things from couture fashion houses. So you do start to get into the area where you can save money if you are trying to make a designer inspired item. But that also requires a high level of skill, a lot of practice, those projects can be very time consuming. We'll get into that in a little bit. But if an item is $5,000 and you're able to make it for a couple hundred dollars with your fabric in, then you can actually save money. So I think when people kind of assume, oh, you know, you must sew to save money, right? I personally don't. I know a lot of other people don't. Quilters don't either because that fabric can be pretty pricey and they're spending hundreds of hours making a quilt. So that's definitely not cost effective in comparison to just buying one of those mass produced quilts at the store. But we sew because we love it. We like to make our own things. We like to make them customizable. I think sewing is a great activity, especially if you're trying to make clothes for a body type that's a little bit atypical compared to like the ready to wear sizing. I know a lot of us have a lot of frustrations with that and rightfully so. But in terms of saving money, I just think that's sort of a an assumption and like kind of a uh, cliche that just is generally not true. One thing that struck me as a beginner sewist was the price of everything. I really had no 
point of reference for how much anything costs. So when I was getting into it, I didn't know how much to expect to pay for a sewing machine, for fabric, for all of the supplies you need, even for things like acrylic rulers, rotary cutters, marking pens. That stuff really adds up and I've been able to build up a nice sized collection over time. I did not do it overnight and I don't recommend you do that. I think as you get more involved in sewing as a hobby, you kind of figure out more what your needs actually are. I've certainly bought things that I didn't need. I thought I did, but then as I got more advanced in my sewing or did it longer, I realized I didn't really need to buy that. I think the other thing that people who don't sew have no idea of is how expensive sewing machines can be and how expensive fabric can be. I had no idea that there were twenty or thirty thousand dollar sewing machines back in the day. I actually asked a bunch of my coworkers how much they thought an expensive sewing machine was, and they all guessed something like two hundred dollars. So in my coworkers' minds, the $200 machine was like an expensive sewing machine, and they didn't even realize that that was more the price of a very entry-level like brother machine. I wouldn't say there are a lot of people who sew. Obviously, sewing is a pretty niche thing now. I know back in the day, a lot more people sewed, but it was more out of necessity. And now because we are living in a more modern society and we have like clothing produced in factories, the need to sew has gone down over time. And obviously, I think there are less people sewing now than there probably were like a 100 years ago. That was something a lot more people did. And that's just something that when you talk to people who don't do it, you realize just how out of touch they are with like what they think sewing is and then what sewing actually is, if that makes sense. And we got to talk about fabric because you can easily drop hundreds or thousands of dollars on fabric. Now, if you are trying to get into clothing, which I know a lot of people who are watching this channel probably are, this is a sewing pattern. And on the back of the pattern envelope, you will have fabric requirements. And many garments require two, three, four, five yards of fabric. And that fabric can be fairly pricey. So I made this jacket a while ago and if I was going to use like a pretty nice like kind of tweedy fabric, you know, it might be like 15 to 20 dollars per yard for a good quality fabric. And I actually do recommend trying to use good fabrics. I'm not saying the most expensive fabrics, but quality fabrics, because if you are spending all of this time to make your own clothing, you want the clothing to last. You want it to be high quality. So I personally like to use like nice fabrics in my sewing projects just because it's something I want to keep for a very long time. Now let's take a look at the back of this envelope. All right, if I'm making a size 14, which is about my size in McCall's, and I'm using a 60 inch wide fabric, I need at least anywhere between like one and five eighths of a yard and uh, two and seven eighths of a yard. So you really do need to buy three, at least three yards of this. Yeah, at least three yards of this. And that's with a 60 inch wide uh, bolt. So fabric can come in different widths. 60 inches is fairly wide. A lot of quilting cotton, it's about 42 to 44 inches. Some fabrics are about 45 inches. So you kind of need to check the bolt and see how wide the fabric is. But again, if you're, say I'm using $15 a yard fabric and I need three yards, that's already $45 just on the outside fabric. This one also has a lining to it as well. So again, as, as far as the cost goes, this might be like marginally cheaper than buying like a store-bought like jacket, but a lot of stores have sales and you could often get like a blazer like this or jacket for about the same price. That also doesn't account for the time you spend making it and also the cost of your sewing machine, all of the supplies you need, and also like all of the notions, like if you've got buttons or zippers or whatnot, these things really add up. And I feel like a lot of folks don't really know what they're getting into. And that's kind of why I wanted to do this video is because I see a lot of people, especially on these beginner sewing subreddits and in Facebook groups, people are asking kind of the same questions over and over again. So hopefully this video is helpful. All right, this is a big one and I see it all the time online and I think we definitely need to talk about this. I see this, someone will post like a photo, an inspo photo. It'll be some really complicated ball gown that would require a high level of skill, very 
tricky to work with, like slippery fabric. It's something that is not the easiest pattern to do, or, and there's not even a pattern for it. And they post and they're like, I want to make this. Do you think this would be too hard? You typically get like very polarizing responses. A lot of people are like, not a chance in hell. Then other people try to be encouraging. I almost kind of feel like they're not doing that person a favor. They'll be like, you know, maybe uh, this way you would need to do this, this, and this. And you might be able to do this if you cobble together these patterns. I'm not trying to be discouraging here, but if you are on Reddit or on Facebook and you're asking people about a particular item you want to make, you have no idea how it's constructed. You have no idea what's involved and you're asking the internet, I would take that as a sign that you're probably not ready for this type of project, especially if it's something that is like from a designer house or something you saw on a TV show or in a movie. That's what a lot of them are. They're like, I saw this character in this movie wearing this wedding dress. Oh, also the people that want to make wedding dresses. I'm like, do you really want to subject yourself to that? And then you get a lot of longtime seamstresses chiming in and saying, I've been sewing for 40 years and I would never attempt to try to make a wedding dress. Are you crazy? And I feel like that slap of reality is probably needed in that situation. So I'm here to tell you, in my opinion, you might disagree. This is kind of a hot take. If you have to ask that question and you don't know anything about the item, I feel like you would be doing yourself a disservice, especially if you're a total beginner, to try to attempt that. I think it would not be a good experience for you. It would probably be extremely frustrating. And the chances of you getting the result from your inspo picture, in my opinion, would be extremely low. And that's happened to me too. I've attempted projects where I had something in my head. I'm like, all right, I want to do this. And then what I ended up getting was nothing close to that. I would say my sewing level is probably sort of like in the middle. I'm not a baby beginner. I'm not an expert, that's for sure. But I think part of becoming a good sewist is knowing where you're at and knowing what you're capable of and then choosing products that are suitable for your skill level. Like, that's the thing. I want sewing to be enjoyable. I don't want to try to bite off more than I can chew and sew something that is going to be absolutely stressful. So I wouldn't do that. Now, I have seen some other, to play devil's advocate, I've seen people say like something like, I do best under high pressure situations. They'll say things like trial by fire, just get thrown into the deep end and you'll figure it out. Now, some people might be able to work like that and may be able to pull it off. I am not one of those people. And I doubt a lot of other people are either. So I feel like telling people that may not actually be helping them. The other thing you have to think about too is if you try a project that you're not going to be able to execute well, you could end up wasting a bunch of time, a bunch of materials, and spend a bunch of money for nothing. So I don't want that to happen to people. So that's why I tend to encourage people to skill build, start off with something really basic. Again, I'm not against learning as you go, but I think there's different levels of that. I want something to be a good experience and a confidence builder. And I think some projects, if you're going way out of your league with a sewing project, I don't think you're probably going to enjoy it. That might turn you off to sewing if you have an experience that sucks. Again, start basic, work your way up. There's nothing wrong with that. Learn as you go, look at resources. There are so many free resources now with YouTube and blogs and everything else that you can learn different techniques and practice. You will get better if you practice and sew a lot. So that's my opinion on it, but I, I'm kind of frustrated by seeing all of these beginners. Again, they don't know any better posting these just very like difficult and complicated sewing items and people telling them that it'll be okay because I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think it's extremely important to manage your expectations of a sewing project versus the reality of it. And sometimes the reality just isn't pretty. Let's talk about the actual sewing patterns. And something you need to know is that right out of the envelope, the pattern is probably not going to fit you perfectly. They're not really meant to. These are designed with sort of like a basic body shape. And then you're supposed to make adjustments to the pattern based on your body type and your measurements. Something that I think some folks will do is they'll get the pattern out, they'll kind of look at the back and usually there is a size guide. So it'll tell you what the measurements are. Like if your bust is 36, or your waist is like 30, like me, that gives you a specific size. 
I'm closest to the size 14 and I actually find, at least for me, these fit fairly close to the envelope. So I personally don't need to make a lot of adjustments, but other people need to make a lot of adjustments. So that's something that I think you need to have a like a realistic expectation with is that you don't just get out the pattern tissue, do one size and then call it a day. These patterns, again, they're meant to be sort of a starting point and not just to like a, this, these will fit everybody. So I've seen people like they probably make like one size, don't realize that that might not fit them because everybody's different. We all have different bodies and then they complain about the fit of the item. But really these again are meant to be sort of a starting place for you. And there are a lot of different pattern adjustments that you can make. There are so many tutorials on YouTube. I would highly recommend you look them up. The other thing I, I will say though, I think the pattern manufacturers could do a better job at maybe communicating that fact with customers, especially because again, you do have a lot of like new younger sewists who may not necessarily know that. Another thing I would love to see pattern manufacturers do is do tutorials and have some educational content, put them out themselves on doing pattern adjustments, like do common pattern adjustments. Like there's things like sway back, things you can do with busts, like small bust adjust adjustment, large bust adjustment. The one adjustment I tend to need to make is I have very small shoulders. So I find garments tend to fit strange on me just because they're meant for somebody with bigger shoulders. So that is an adjustment I often have, I sometimes have to make. And to be 100% with you, I'm not very good at pattern adjustments. And that's something that I need to improve. So that's something I'm totally aware of. But just know that when you get this pattern, you kind of need to do a practice garment. That's something I also want to recommend is if you're working with a pattern and you're trying to make something, don't just bust out the good fabric right away, especially if you've never made the pattern before. You'll see people recommend making a muslin or a toile as they're called or a practice garment. And that's something you should do, especially if it's something that you like a really like high effort project. If you're trying to make a wedding dress or like a gown or something, you want to at least try to use thrifted or like very cheap fabric, but something that has a similar weight and feel, whether it's stretchy or it's woven to your end fabric, you We'll want to do that and at least make a practice one. What that does is you can work out the fit issue so you can try on the practice garment and be like, okay, it looks kind of weird here. What do I need to do? The other thing you can, sometimes the, especially with these like big four pattern makers, the instructions can be a little bit like obtuse. So with the practice garment or the muslin, you can sort of work out any potential mistakes or little like snags in the construction process. And at least you, if you have any mess ups, it's on your practice garment and not on your like finished, you know, good item. Also, it's very important to pick the right fabric for the right sewing project. Not all fabrics, like they're not universal. Fabrics don't always work on certain types of items. For instance, I would probably not use knit fabric to make a wedding dress. I also would not use thin silk to make sweatpants. So on the back of your pattern envelope, you will have some fabric recommendations. Like you can see here, this one recommends lightweight woven fabric like chalice or polyester crepe, something like that. So I would not use like wool tweed on this shirt because it would come out really badly. So you need to pay attention to the, the pattern instructions and then the pattern recommendations. See, it says chalice, crepe, double georgette, crepe de chine, charmeuse. The pattern should tell you what kind of fabrics will work best. And getting to know different fabrics is a really important part of sewing. So I would recommend doing some homework, doing some research and just see what's out there, go to a fabric store, touch, feel the fabric. And another great resource is going to these stores and asking questions. Pick the brain of the people that work there. Ask about different fabrics and you'll start to become familiar with what's out there, but it can be a bit overwhelming. The reason I want to do this is to set you up for success rather than failure. And I think these are just things that I feel like a lot of people don't know right off the bat. Now, many fabrics do need to be pre-washed and pressed like with an iron before you work with them. So before you trace and cut out the pattern pieces, again, there are tons of resources out there on which fabrics need to be pre-washed and which don't. I will also link a video I did a while ago with 17 basic sewing tips 
because I do talk about fabric and pre-washing. So certain fabrics do need to be pre-washed because a lot of fabrics will shrink. So imagine just cutting into raw fabric, making an outfit, and then when you throw it in the washing machine, it shrinks and doesn't fit you anymore. That would really be very sad to have something you spent a lot of time on no longer fit and be ruined because you didn't prepare the fabric for this project. And speaking of pressing, that's something you're going to be doing a lot of if you're getting into sewing or quilting. You're going to want a good iron. Doesn't need to be expensive, just a good steam iron. Have a pressing board, an ironing board. I actually made my own because I had no idea how much time I would be spending ironing. And that's something that's really important with the finished item. So you'll get a much better quality item if you're pressing every step of the way. It's very important in sewing clothing or quilting because you need to press out the seams and you need to be pressing as you make the item. It is very important. Don't skip it. You will get much better sewing results if you properly press all of your projects as you are working with them. Again, you also don't want to start out with wrinkled fabric, so you need to press all of your fabric before you even trace and cut out pattern pieces or start to work with it because, again, that can really distort pieces. And that's something that, again, I've even seen people say, I had no idea you had to iron your projects and I just didn't do it. So that's something you don't want to skip. And that's just something I want to convey to you. This one's a biggie for me, and that's avoid sewing on a tight deadline. I cannot believe how many people I see posting. They're like, I need to make this today and I haven't started yet. They don't give themselves enough time to sew the project and to do everything with it. You need to leave yourself a really good, healthy cushion of time because you're going to be stressed out if you're trying to sew something like, you know, on a deadline. You're also probably going to make more mistakes. It's not going to be fun or enjoyable. Back in college, I had a friend who was going to be in a wedding as a bridesmaid and she was sewing her own bridesmaid's dress and she was doing it like two days before. And I was like, are you crazy? Also, she didn't know how to sew. So she was kind of just winging it. I don't know how the final dress turned out, but I even that back then I was like, that seems like it. you might be setting yourself up for a for a bad situation here. She had the sewing machine and she I think she like borrowed it from someone. If you liked working under pressure, hey, more power to you. I hate being under a ton of pressure. So I like to give myself extremely long deadlines. That's why people are like, oh, I want to sew my wedding dress. And people say you need to give yourself like six months or something like that. And I think that's a good rule of thumb because again, you don't want to feel ridiculous ridiculously stressed out and incredibly anxious as you're trying to make something for like the, the next day or something. I see videos like that on like Instagram and YouTube. They're like, I'm sewing a dress for a party night. And I'm like, that looks like hell to me. That just looks like hell. I would not want to do that. If you do, that's that's cool. I'm just like, you know, I'm piecing out of that. Full disclosure, recently I did hate watch the new Sex in the City reboot called And Just Like That. And there's a perfect example about not giving yourself enough time for this project. In the TV show, uh, Carrie Bradshaw is going to the Met Gala and she wants to give her, fr her friend's wife a chance to make her outfit for this event. So her name is Smoke. She's an aspiring fashion designer. And I saw the storyline and I was like, secondhand, like I had some anxiety. I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? So Smoke, again, I felt like that was incredibly unrealistic of the writers because I don't feel like anybody who's in fashion school or has like formal training in fashion design would do this. You would probably start this process months before doing sketches, doing fittings with this, this client. And you would never just start the outfit the day of the event, which is what was happening on the show. And it ends up being kind of a disaster. So she's trying to make Carrie this like weird tube dress, which also, again, I was like, that looks kind of weird. It wasn't working out. So Carrie ended up having to use another wear a dress she already had to the event. And then Smoke was only able to make like a cape for the outfit. So that was her contribution. And that's the thing that was supposed to be like her big break designing an outfit for a local New York celebrity. And she just totally like screwed that up. Didn't give herself any favors by starting literally the day of. 
Uh, the day of, you should be doing like, I don't know, final adjustments, but there should be nothing major you're doing the day of. That was just insane. I was like, what is going on here? But that's why you should not be putting yourself in situations where you are under extremely tight deadlines. And that brings me to my last point is that the point of sewing, at least for me and what I want for all of you is to be enjoyable and fun. And if you're not having fun and you're really stressed out, that's that's not a good thing. So just remember relax a little bit. That's why I gave you these suggestions is because I want this whole process to be stress-free, to be enjoyable, to be fun, to be a learning experience without you feeling like you're like under the gun. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I want to do this video. If you are watching this and you have more experience and you would like to leave a tip, like kind of a basic tip for a beginner sewist, leave it down below in the comments. But I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to hit the like button. You're welcome to subscribe for more sewing videos like this. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. I'll see you again in the next one. And remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.